Hi, welcome back to part three. We are going to continue where we left off. Initially, what I wanted to do is I wanted the character to run aside the wall. Once it gets to the end of the wall, then he would do a peek automatically. But I am opting to rather make this a manual process. We're going to go to Edit, Project Settings, add a new input, and we'll call it Peak. I'm going to make my key F for Foxtrot, but you are free to change it to whatever you want. So one thing that does take a bit of time is setting up the animations. Go to the Crocopeed folder, excuse me, go to the Crocopeed folder animations and delete the animations you see in there. Once it's deleted, in the description of this video, I will have the URL. I'll try and make it available on my website. I was thinking of doing something a bit more permanent at a later stage. There will definitely be better animations later on, but for now, the, these are placeholders. So once you've downloaded them, please import them into Unreal. I'll just go to which animations. I'm going to select only the left look and right look. In this tutorial, we will not be covering the actual aiming that will be done in the next tutorial in part four. So I'll open this up. Make sure you do select the animation starter pack, skeleton. Let's import this. I should have said import all. It's still on the animation starter pack. Import that one as well. So what we need to do is we need to duplicate these. I did take a bit of a uh, how can you put this? A short path. So let's just uh, duplicate them. Just rename the two at the end to X. Okay, so ideally you would want individual animations. Uh, I didn't create uh, additional placeholders, I just created one exported. So we do have to do some manual stuff. Just uh, open up the cover left look one, go to frame 15 right click and say remove 16 to 30 that should give us just the initial peaking animation ideally or not ideally but you can reverse the animation you don't need to follow this process however in this case that's what we're doing go open up layer left look x go back to frame 15 right click uh, 15 right click remove 0 to 15 so that should be x for exit Okay, so that's the exit one. We'll repeat the process for right look. This animation was a bit slow, so we'll speed it up later. But let's just check. Okay, so we want about roughly frame, uh, there, there we go, frame 28, remove frame 0 to 29. That'll just be the initial peak. Save this and close this. Now go to right look X. Open this up, go back to frame 28. Uh, that should be good. And delete 0 to 28. That should give us the exit from the peak. Just save this animation. Okay, we'll need to set up some basic functionality for our character. So just open up its blueprint. We'll definitely need some additional bulls here. So go ahead and create them. Call the one left. And call the other one. Uh, sorry, my thing is unresponsive. There we go. Call the other one is peaking. Okay, so we do have those. We Let's start setting up the peaking controls. So you can just input peak That'll give us that, and from here we'll branch out. Okay, so just to give some background, or so let's let's first uh, complete this. So I'm gonna say, set is peaking. I'll set it to plug the false in there, and we'll cover exactly what we're doing here for a moment, uh, in a moment, and get the get move, plug that in. Okay, so there is a few things that we need to sort out. The other thing, duplicate this branch when it's released, plug this in. At this peaking, make sure it's true, duplicate it, set false, plug true in, get peaking, plug that into the branch and just comment there. 
Okay, so I know we might did a lot of stuff now and I didn't explain why. Let me quickly explain what we did. Firstly, let me just quickly apologize that I am going a bit fast. The previous takes on this tutorial was over 40 minutes and I'm trying to get it down uh, to something manageable. Okay, so basically what we are doing, we are doing the trace that we do when we are running against the wall. So just so there's some visual reference for you, that is the trace that is happening. So this trace is occurring, we're doing the trace again. Once you can't move anymore, it's returning false, meaning that we're at the end of the wall. So that's why we're using that trace here again. And uh, we're checking false, we're at the end of the wall. Uh, so when we do press, we want to peak, then it'll actually set the state for us or the bool value. And we only want to undo that or set this to false once if it is actually peaking and we released the key. So it doesn't unnecessarily do that. I'm pretty sure this is not required, but let's do it that way. I do like to uh, build in extra redundancy into my systems just to prevent future bugs from popping up because I have seen that time and time again that you are not implementing something specific to be more efficient, but effectively you are leaving gaps for bugs to creep out at a later stage. So we'll just leave that in there. We did create this left uh, pool as well. So just open can move and cover. So effectively what we did here is we, that's what we're doing. We get move right. If it's minus one, it means we're moving left. So just to keep things a bit clearer, I'm going to get this left variable, pull it in here and replace that. We can then delete it. That's a bit more clear because now we have this. We're not always sure when we do open up this function that it, what exactly it does, and we have to spend a few milliseconds or minutes uh, thinking about that, depending how long ago you worked on it. So just duplicate that and bring it over to the other select node, plug it in, and remove this one. So we're not actually setting the left value just yet. So that's what we're going to do now. As you can see, I'm just going to create a little bit of space and move all this up. Okay, so I did move all of these nodes just a little bit up. You didn't miss anything. I just created space. Okay, so from the axis value of the move right, we want to compare this value. We are going to compare it, complete the execution flow and from equal, if it's a zero, it'll just continue. We want to compare it with zero. If it is greater than zero, it means we're moving right. So we'll get left, uh, I apologize. We'll set left and we'll keep it to false, meaning we're going right. If it is however in the negative value, it, it means we're actually moving left. So we'll keep that to true. We'll just plug that in. To confirm that our logic is sound, we can just quickly go back to this and check if the trace is still happening. It's still going to the left and it's still going to the right. So that looks good. Now we can move on to the animation graph. Uh, okay, one second. Before we do move in, uh, on to the animation graph, add our peak controls just to create a little bit more space. I want to add an additional check here. We can probably just plug it in from there, but we're going to be using what I'm about to add twice. So the bottom branch you can move up, pull this one back and select and and we'll plug in there. So we want to check if it is currently peaking and we also set a variable is covered. So we want to get this. So it has to be covered and it has to be peaking. The reason for that is we do not want him to undo we do not want him to undo in a certain situation. So we can probably bring it out there, but what I am going to do, I'm just gonna add an additional branch just to keep things a bit clear and plug. Uh, it shouldn't be peaking, it should be covered. So I'll just swap covered and peaking around to get the lines a bit more organized. There we go. So. It'll do that, check if it's in a covered state because it does need to be in a covered state. I did find that if you do not include this check and you press peaking, because this is going to return false when you're not against the wall uh, and you're actually not in a covered state, it'll go through and the character will start doing peaks uh, just randomly 
well, well, it'll allow you to press. We don't want that. We only want it in a covered state. Okay, we should be able to move on to the animation graph. I do apologize for any background noise, but it's pretty damn hot over here and I'm keeping the windows open for some fresh air. Okay, so animation graph. Let's not digress too much. So basically select your character, scroll over to the details pane that you do see here. Under animation you can find the little hourglass or what is that called magnifying glass and open that up. So over here where we are casting to our character after this crouching we'll set the other values. So one thing we do want we can get covered. We want to get peaking and we want to get uh, left. So one important thing to keep in mind is this left. This is going to be a real confuser if that's even a word but before we get to that right click is covered promote to variable and call this variable uh, covered covered peaking uh, right click promote to variable I'm just gonna call it peaking you can say is peaking but it'll conflict with the other one might cause a problem shouldn't but it might and this one I'm going to promote a variable and I'm going to call this one right. I'm not going to call it left, I'm going to call it right. I'll explain to you now. So let's just quickly make sure these ones execute. You'll notice that this is a bit different. In the previous tutorial with ledge climbing I was working with interface events mainly because it's a bit cleaner, easier to keep track of, for me at least personally. Some people do prefer this method, I do not, but that argument uh, we're not getting into. Technically we just did, but we're not getting into it anymore. Okay, everything is said. So, as for this right, why are we changing left to right? That is because when I'm pressing right, I'm going right, when I'm pressing left, I'm going left. However, when I'm in cover and I'm pressing right, even though on the screen he's going right, technically the character is now going left. If he's going left, technically he's going right. So that's why we call this right, just to keep things a little less confusing. Most of the variables, if not all, are now configured and we need to start building our animation states. Okay, now for the animation states, we'll start off with idle. So let's head over to our locomotion system. If you don't know where to find it, it should be on the animation graph or anim graph. Go to locomotion. Let's open up idle. Before we do anything, I need to tell you and make you aware that select does not work in animation graph. This does not work. It cost me quite a few hours of bashing my head and not understanding why the hell my sound logic is not working. Eventually Epic gave a reasonable answer. It doesn't work in animation graphs and I do understand their point of view as to why this stuff is more orientated for blueprints. Animation graphs have their own little magic nodes flowing around you. So let's get started. We're gonna do a layered bone Layered bone, layer blend per bone. We'll plug that in there and this one will flow to the base pose, so that will be our base pose. We then need a bool blend. So you can just type in bool and then get blend poses, poses by bool. Okay, and the bool that will be triggering this is peaking. Okay, so peaking will then decide if it's going in there or not. Oh, you know, not peaking. That's not what we're doing. I do apologize. We're going to get right. Right will depend which state it's going to select. So the first state would be play left cover look and the other state would be play right cover look. Make sure not to select the exits. It has to be uh, the left look only. Okay, so that'll be that pose and that'll be that pose. Select the first one, untick it's loopable, we don't need to have it loopable and as for the play rate we'll make it zero. We don't want to do that, uh, play it, so just on the second one 
make it not looping and then change it to zero. The reason we are doing this is because of the placeholders. It's because it's placeholder animations, they aren't actually animated. Well, they are, but we don't want to play the entire thing. This is not for the intent of creating the peaking around the corner. This is just to create a pose that we can relate to, that we can look at and say, yeah, this dude is definitely taking a pose against the wall there. So that's what uh, that is for. Now, the other one will get covered. Get the covered pool and plug that into the blend weights. So if this is true, it'll blend over. If it's in a covered state, it'll blend over to this based on which direction the character is facing that we get from this variable. Okay, now another thing not to forget, under the layer blend per bone. I don't know if you can hear the plane outside my window. I hope not, but it is there. Layered setup. Okay, I'm just going to continue now. I've been pausing this for about five minutes and this damn airplane and cars aren't going anywhere. Hopefully Epic it has plans to launch a studio out in the middle of the Bolivian rainforest and they'll give me a little office there where it's quiet. That'll be really, really awesome. Intent, do it please. In any case, let's continue. So, this covered, bam, goes through, should be fine. What I was busy saying, layer blend per bone, make sure under the layer setup, you actually do specify a value. We are going to go to spine underscore zero one, and we'll make the blend depth one. Why? Because we want everything to be included above spine zero one. So if you're curious where is spine zero one, just go to the skeleton, say show bones, and if you want to show bone names, so spine zero one is uh, there. There's spine zero one. That one there. Uh, yes. Okay. So everything up from that, that will be blended. Okay. This is already on 17 minutes, and uh, it still feels like it's going way too slow. What we can do is open up Idle, as it should be working pretty nifty. Just uh, copy all those components, go back to locomotion, go over to the jog state, move this up a bit, paste the stuff we just copied in there, uh, link that up, and that should resolve our jog issue as well. We can have a quick test just to see what happened there. So you can see it's it's still it's it's doing it. It just looks really weird. So to fix that, just go back there, select the layer blend per bone, this little box, mesh space rotation blend, tick that on, and then we need to go back to the idle state and do the same for the layer blend per bone, tick that on as well. So this time it should look a little bit better. Yeah, I can't remember him holding his gun quite like that. It's almost like we chose the wrong animation because he's, yeah, he's already leaning. So that is a major problem. So which animation we have play, cover, right, look. I just want to open up this animation and confirm that we did not make a mistake here. So if we did make a mistake. He's already in the lean phase. But I guess uh, considering, uh, okay, now we're gonna need it at some point. What we can do is we can maybe just change this to minus one instead of re-importing and fixing stuff. So, but then, no, that won't work. Okay, so the base solution, we just to quickly go back. I want to see what this one is. This one is the exit and the other one was the exit. I don't know how that happened, but it does happen. Okay, so right, look, I'm just gonna delete. Not save, delete, force delete. It's gonna cause some problems because now it's gone. Right, look, open it up. Select, select the animation start back skeleton, import it. Open it up, open it up. Okay, we want to start from there and it needs to go to there. 
So from 27 I'm going to right click, remove 28 to 45. So this time it should give us something more stable to work from. We can go back to the animation graph now. I'm pretty sure all the planes suddenly now flying over the house is due to celebrations for actually having received rain for the first time in a really long time. Yeah, it's been pretty bad times over here. In any case, so the animation, this one, is now gone and we'll just change back play look. So that would be right look and that should then be better selected untick loop change play rate to zero. I did notice uh, a little funny earlier. Okay, something is breaking here. Now, uh, reference unknown sequence play. So it looked like maybe if we just compile it again and again, it should go away or not. Okay, is it somewhere else? Maybe in the jog. There we go. So we'll get look right, plug it in, repeat the same, untick loopable, change it to zero. Okay, no errors. Okay, I think we might have to swap. Yes, we'll have to swap those two, so bring that one up. So put right at the top and left at the bottom and just uh, straighten out the cables. Let's do that for, that was for idle, let's do that for jog as well. So, or was that jog? Let's look at idle. Okay, yeah, right needs to be at the top, left needs to be at the bottom, plug it in. And I really was hoping to get this done in under 20 minutes. It's already 22 and we are not making progress. Gonna have panic attack. Uh, okay, so now it should be a bit better. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. It's going. Okay, so that's now we're gonna reach there and press peak. Absolutely nothing's happening because we haven't done any peak stuff yet. Go back to the animation graph to go to the state machine or the anim graph. From idle, I'm going to pull up and I'm going to select a conduit and I'm going to call this conduit peaking. Okay, so this is just going to facilitate uh, like a little hub area that we move this logic from. This transition to get there, we can say peaking, get peaking. If it's peaking, it can go there and we'll create a transition back from peaking to idle change that to peaking not so if it's not peaking it'll allow you to flow back into it okay now from here we're going to create a new state we'll call this state left uh, we probably have to first select that it's a state and then call it left just going to copy and paste it and I'm going to call this one right okay and i'm going to copy and paste this and i'm going to call it i'm going to call it uh really change the name left x that's the exit uh just copy and paste and rename it to right x for right exit okay just check where is this thing now it's over here I'll just move it up a bit we've got left left X left flows to the exit and the exit flows back to the conduit we've got right flowing to right X and right X flowing back to the conduit okay so yeah, that's basically just to keep it separated from everything else. You can make it a little bit uh, neater if you want. Uh, I want to, so I'll quickly do that. Okay, cool. That should be fine. So now we need to define our animations quickly. Go to the left one and we want to play left. Play cover left look. Okay, that goes in. Uh, untick loopable. We don't want it to loop, but leave its play rate at 1. Let's go to the next one that I just killed. Animation graph, 
vocal left so that's in there left x play cover left x do the same untick the looping we do not want the looping okay compile go back to locomotion and then go to right type in right look okay goes in there untick loop so this would have been a lot less effort have I provided all the animations but sometimes you just have to make do with what you have and uh, something I didn't have was time which is why you are getting all this work to do I do feel bad about that so I seriously do I'm not being sarcastic even though I sound sarcastic when I'm saying I'm not being sarcastic okay that's in your unticked the loop event so we need to quickly set up the transition so to go to left we want to check right uh, and right uh, you know I'm just gonna go here and say get right so if it is not right then it'll flow to left Okay, and then once it reaches left it needs to leave and that would be peaking is it busy peaking I'm going to say not busy peaking then it will actually exit down to left X and in order to get back here we need a transition so we want to play X left or let, let's do left x time left x time so we are looking for time remaining ra ratio of cover left look exit that should be good uh, just do a smaller than 0 0.1 if that is the case it should complete there I noticed uh, some funkies over here so what we do want is we want to get right but we also and and balloon we also want to check another state to make sure that we are doing our transition 100% so we'll see is it peaking as well so it doesn't go into a loop speaking there we go okay so if it's speaking and right then only can it go into that transition state to right exit same story we'll get peaking and not so it should not be peaking then it's allowed to exit means the player left let the key go and then for the exit back from the exit <laughs> sounds funny we will get time remaining or time ratio ratio time remaining ratio for cover right look exit okay less than 0 0.1 should be good as well okay plug that back in there and I believe that should now take care of our peaking. So let's have a quick look. Here we go. Doom, doom, still works. So works. Get to the end. Peak. And it gets stuck. So it's not unpeaking. So we just need to have a quick look. This peaks, right? I'm just going to move this so I can see what is going where. Okay, so this transition seems to be. Oh, wait, we were on the right, so the right was not working, and we set that to not peaking, and this is to not peaking as well. So, technically, it should work, and we are playing the correct animation over here. Okay, so it looked like it wasn't uh, something was not well with the animation. Let's just try the left quick and see if we get the same results. So the results here are better, 
it's definitely doing its peaking action. You know, it looks like it's rubbing his bum there against the ridge, but that's not what he's doing. Uh, there he gets stuck. So I'm just going to alt tab that, change this to debug to see what exactly is happening. So that is his left, his left is firing and also is not peaking his firing, but it never goes anywhere else. This is just not right. <laughs> see what I did there? This is just not right. In any case, we're going to go get peaking and plug this in and in. So we should be able to just plug both of them in there, plug it to not, and there we go, it's getting a bit messy. So create some space. Uh, which way does it need to go? That way. Yeah. So if peaking and right is not true, it means it'll go into that phase or state. Uh, still happening. Let me hold tab, quickly see what the state is. Still jumping, so it is entering this transition, even though it is. Oh, wait, it should. That should be peaking. Yeah, that should. That should be peaking. It should not be peaking. So I'll just remove. Uh, okay, let's. It should be peaking. Okay. But it should not be right. So I'll assume we'll plug in peaking to the end and the not to the end. And then that in there. So 32 minutes going. It doesn't look like I'll get this any shorter. Okay, that peak works fine. Okay, that peak works fine. You see it's a bit more responsive there, so just to make this look a little bit uh, better, is the other one was the, it's the right one, I believe it's the right one, yes. Okay, so this, let's just confirm, is it right? Yeah, it is right. So I'll just make this 2.2, that'll be the animation speed, and for the right exit, I'll ramp that up to 2, so it's uh, extremely responsive reaction from him. Yeah, so you can like just chit chit or you can mm, cool. Other one. That's uh it's a little bit but slow. We'll just quickly improve that one, just speed that up a little. Okay, so this is I'm going to make two point five Commotion and at the exit I'll make it 2.2 or 2.3 just something that actually behaves okay so you'll notice he first leans into the wall before doing the peak so the reason is mostly that we are just blending other animations so he is like trying to go to the wall. It would have been easier if I created full animations. But that should be that. And I guess we can wrap this one up and we keep it up under 40 minutes. I apologize. It was a bit of a talking nonsense and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it does help. You do notice, okay, cool. He's like, what's the point? He's already going to get shot in the head the way he's leaning out there before he even peaked. You could just select your character go down to default cover distance, change this up to 42 or so, that should give him a very good clearance from the corners. Also, once the animations are better or finalized or even created, then he'll actually be leaning against the wall. He won't just be standing in this weird pose here, ready to do his move. But that's what I wanted to say. Move. So even here now, he's a bit more covered. Sure, he'll get shot in his elbow, but it's made of metal, so he won't feel it. Yeah. So you'll notice that lean is also a bit different, but say, hey, and if I'm doing it here, nothing happens. Jump still works. 
but she immediately lands back okay there I left the area cool thanks for watching this tutorial I hope you learned something uh, and I do apologize that it took a while part 4 is going to cover doing the actual aiming and we'll set up the camera control so when we do get here and I go oh shit look at that guy over there I'm gonna blow his damn head off then I'll just be like okay cool wait for him wait for him and then pop a shoot the hell out of him obviously I won't be going Rambo like that it'll be more of a COVID uh, just a COVID mission that I'm like pop pop shoot pop shoot something like that you know, so that's the direction we're going in. I know some people were concerned that they don't know what the direction is we are moving towards. Well, that is that, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Have a great evening, day, wherever you may be. Please do subscribe to my channel. I beg you. It makes a huge difference for me. It keeps me motivated to keep pushing out new content for you guys. I really love doing this stuff. Cool. Have a good one. Cheers.